Hello there, Mr Wilson here again for what is part 9 and hopefully the last part in uh, this series on the uh, November 2021 A-Level Maths Paper 3 by AQA Now if you haven't already, definitely check out all the other videos and subscribe if you haven't done so already um, It's really, really nice to see uh, positive comments as well on videos so if you haven't done so already, definitely, uh, definitely put one of those so I believe that this is the last question on this paper, and this is question 18. So, a factory produces jars of jam and jars of marmalade. Interested? The weight, uh, the weight x grams of uh, jam in a jar can be modelled as a normal distribution uh, with mean of 3.72 and a standard deviation of 3.5. Find the probability that the weight of the jam in the jar is equal to 372. Now, this is a really, I always love this question, right? Because it's always one of them that's, that's just sort of a fact that you should know. So, in the normal distribution, because it is continuous data, the probability that you get an exact value is zero, right? So, the probability that the weight of the jam in the jar is equal to 372, that has to be zero. Now, that doesn't mean it's impossible, Right, because this is where we sort of move from GCSE to A level of the realization that in something being impossible and something you know being um, probability zero don't necessarily mean the same thing now. So just because something can be, because there are infinitely many weights that the jar of jam could be, it's probability zero. So that's what it is. Whereas the second part says, find the probability that the weight of the jam in the jar is greater than 368 grams. Well, to work this out, I would do, so the probability that X is greater than 368, uh, I would do 1 minus the probability that X is less than 368. Now, we don't have to say less than or equal to because, remember, probability being equal to 368 is 0. So it's just 1 minus the probability of X being less than 368. And if you put that in the calculator, I believe you get 0 0.873, I did it in the calculator earlier, 0 0.873, uh, is the final answer there. So a nice little normal distribution question there, a little bit of probability, a bit of calculator work as well. Right, then part B says the weight of uh, y grams of marmalade in a jar can be modelled as a normal variable with mean of uh, mu and standard deviation of sigma. Given the, the probability that y is less than 346 is equal to 0 0.975, show that 346 minus mu is equal to 1.96 sigma. Now, this is interesting because this is actually using inverse normal, right, which is a, a, a sort of crazy idea. So the idea is that for this value to happen, Right, so for that value, the probability to be that on a normal distribution, right? So what you're saying is that the area of the curve um, is 0 0.975. In other words, 97.5% 97 of all the data lies from that mark backwards, basically, right? So we want to work out what is that value there that would allow 97.5% of all the data to be there. Well, actually, we can use inverse norm, inverse norm, uh, to work that value out. And I believe, right, it is 1.96, because it's actually quite a famous value, right? 97.5% is quite a famous Z value. So it's 1.96. So in other words, right, the probability that Z, right, uh, is less than, 346 take away mu divided by the standard deviation is equal to uh, 0 0.975. Now, this comes from the formula in the booklet, right? It's just modeled by a normal distribution. And then we know that this corresponds to a, a, a value of uh, 1.96. So, in other words, right? In other words, we get uh, 346 take away mu over sigma is equal to 1.96 so 346 take away mu is equal to 1.96 sigma and i believe is that what they were asking for there we go 
as shown. So the only really tricky part about this is the modeling bit here, but this realization that you need to do inverse normal to find the, the critical value um, of the normal distribution, given that 97.5% of all the data, like what is that value that give you 97.5% of the data? So that is uh, that's kind of a key idea there. Right then, given further that, the probability that Y is less than uh, 336 is equal to 0 0.14, find mu and sigma. Well, basically, we can do exactly the same thing, right, that we just did. So we can use inverse norm on 0 0.14. So, you know, imagine we had a curve. 0 0.14 is going to be somewhere down here, right, because it's only 14% of the data. So it's going to be somewhere here. What is that critical value that would allow us to have 14% of the data there? Well, it is negative 1.08. So again, we can we can do exactly the same setup where we do 336, take away mu over sigma, must be equal to negative 1.08. So we get 336, take away mu is equal to negative 1.08 sigma. And then we can uh, rearrange, so we get 1.08 uh, sigma, uh, take away mu is equal to negative 336. And from the previous part, we get um, 1.96 mu plus uh, uh, sigma plus mu is equal to. Uh, let's flick back. Uh, 346. So if we plug those into the calculator, because the calculator can solve simultaneous equations, we have a pair of simultaneous equations, and we should get 3.29 for the standard deviation. And the mean is, I think, quite a nice round number, 340 in this case. So a nice little question there, right? You know, inverse norm, quite a very high-level technique, right, to use the inverse normal to find something that you want. Um, to then form simultaneous equations. But it reminds me of, of, a, of a question that we just did, this one here, uh, where you had to form simultaneous equations in probability and then solve. That seems to be a more common idea now than it probably ever has been. Even when I did my A-levels, it probably wasn't as common as it is now. So actually using that, um, using a simultaneous equation to solve two variables, forming two equations, they, they, they do like to handhold it a little bit. So they sort of give you one part where you form one equation, give you another part to form another equation, then you have to realise it's simultaneous equations. But um, still a very tricky technique, still a very difficult idea, and that is the end of the questions. Now, this has been a long series, actually, because um, for, for a while I, I uploaded every single day, and um, basically since the start of the year. And then after all the exams, I just needed to take a bit of a break from uh, from YouTube and just uh, take a step back. So um, I have finally finished this paper series. It has been going on quite a long time uh, since I actually started it. Um, at the time of recording this, um, I am in the making of some uh, different videos over the summer um, of 24 to, to help students. Now these will obviously apply to future years but um but at the time of recording this that's what i'll be doing and um, so there'll be loads of stuff coming out this summer just because the exams are over doesn't mean that the fun stops in the maths obviously so uh so that'll be there for those people but overall um yeah i really enjoy making youtube videos it's one of my favorite uh, things to do it's it's something that i like to do you know when i've got a bit of spare time it's just nice to relax and and, and give that a go so if you have enjoyed my videos then then thank you for being a avid watcher um, and, and please l let me know in the comments below if there's anything you would like me to do in particular, anything like that. I will be uh, hopefully getting back up to my uh, sort of regular uh, schedule um, in terms of YouTube. I just need to sort of figure out the logistics on uh, on sort of how that's going to work and, and sort of plan it around my uh, sort of life and things like that. But thank you for being patient for those that have been waiting for videos and they haven't been that consistent recently. Um, you know we've all just got to take that break sometimes and uh, i do enjoy making youtube videos but sometimes you have too much of a good thing can't you so uh, thank you for being patient but all i want to say is thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a fantastic day